And we're heading back to River State where efforts are being made to resolve the political logjam between Governor Sim Fubara and his predecessor in office, Niesam Wike. President Bola Tinubu's intervention in the matter a few days ago seems to have borne some fruit with today's withdrawal of impeachment proceedings against the governor by the 27 Wike loyalists in the State House of Assembly. However, elders and opinion leaders in River State have emerged from a meeting on Tuesday to publicly reject the terms of the so-called peace deal brokered by the president between the two warring factions. Joining us now to speak about that peace pact between Fubara and Wike, our leader of the pan Niger Delta Forum and elder statesman Chief Edwin Clark. Very good to have you on Newsday today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, my daughter. Well, Chief Clark, we've been watching as this saga continues to unfold. Uh, we also read in the newspapers uh, this uh, morning where you called this uh, a hoax. You said that Fubara did not sign this imposed settlement, uh, which is what you're calling the written truce that was uh, deliberated on and presented by the uh, by a group of individuals. So is it really, in your opinion, that he wasn't signed? And why so? Why do you believe that it is an imposed settlement, quote unquote? Thank you very much. It is an imposed uh, settlement or what an agreement of understanding. It is imposed on uh, Pubra under all uh, unfavorable uh, surrounding where most of the people of those invited to attend the me so-called meeting were one side they were from wicked side and those who signed the agreement how many of them were from uh, from uh, uh, the governor's side, even the speaker that was recognized by the constitution that after the resignation, after the, the, the defection of the so-called 25, 26, 27 House of Assembly members who have now lost their seat under the section 1091D of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. They are no longer members of the House. Whoever is parading themselves is preaching the Constitution of Nigeria. Neither Mr. President, whom I have very high regard for, who is the President of Nigeria and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, we recognize him. We believe in him but has no power, no authority to alter the constitution of Nigeria, which is war, to defend, to uphold. So when this morning I saw a group of uh, illegal legislators passing, uh, withdrawing the motion of impeachment they had passed, on, allegedly passed on uh, the governor of River State, I laughed. Who are these illegal legislators parading themselves? All what they are doing, they are now pressurizing the governor to perform his own part of the bargain, which is very detrimental to him, which the death warrant is signed, and if he did, he's committing suicide. So what we are doing, what we are saying is that. The president had good intention. We called upon him to call wicked to order, not to arrive that, that people have been mit, mit, misunderstanding the whole issue that we call Mr. President to mediate. We didn't call Ms. on Mr. President to mediate. We called on him to call his minister wicked to order. That's all what we did. So for him to go extra mile, to go and impose a one-sided, oppressive, and unconstitutional agreement on the governor is unacceptable to all of us. 
that the River State people in particular go to the go to Port Harcourt, ask out of ten people, eight of them will say that the whole agreement is unacceptable, it's an insult on the people of River State. And the generality of our people. If it happened today to we to Fubra, tomorrow Mr. Mr. President will go to another state. When he tried to do the same thing in Ondo, some of us wrote an open letter to him that he should do what is proper, adopt the doctrine of necessity, because what was happening was never envisaged by the Constitution. That was, the, that was what was applied in the case of President uh, Jonathan when President Yeradua was sick in Saudi Arabia. And even when he returned, the, uh, Jonathan was still acting. So what we are saying is that the 27 of them, according to them, have crossed carpet, waving the flags of APC, singing the, 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 the campaign song of uh, Mr. President on our mandate or something like that. And the whole place was rowdy. They went very early in the morning about 7 o'clock, an ungodly hour. And one would have expected that Mr. President will uh, recognize the provision of the Constitution. Nobody except the court, can return these people to the house. So if they said, go and assemble in the house and let Mr. Governor bring to you the already signed into law budget, which has never happened anywhere, There's no, there was no mistake to the illegal house. They are now members of APC. On Sunday last week, they were they received, the APC received them as members of APC. Are they now going to the House as members of APC to, to consider the budget? And the and the commissioners who have no, no trust. Our confidence in the governor again because they felt that the governor has, is confronting their master who nominated them because they were his serving minister before he transferred them to the go new governor. They, re they resigned on their own. They were not forced to resign. And the, the agreement is now saying Again, who is appointing them? Is it close on an acceptable? All right, Chief. how can you say that? Okay, Chief. Five Lord. members of the house. Yes, please. If I could just come in, I mean, yes, you've, I'm you've you. spoken about how the president was unnecessarily called to come and separate what, uh, you know, whatever, uh, you know, fights that might have occurred between uh, the ex-governor and the present governor. But we've seen that the president and elder statesmen have intervened in this reverse crisis since October, and it's still escalated into we a full-blown fight. We did ask Mr. President to intervene. Yes, of course. But we you had mentioned... Mr. President to intervene. Yes, Chief thought. Clark, yes. You mentioned that Governor Fubara was ambushed and intimidated into submission. I want you to please elaborate on the circumstances yes. that you believe led to this perception. And in your opinion, what should have been the appropriate approach to resolving this crisis? Thank you very much. I was a mem I've been a member of government in this country. I've served in various capacities. I was the commissioner for education in Midwest. I was the commissioner for finance in Midwest. I was the founder and pro-chancellor of the University of Benin. I was the first pro-chancellor of the Federal University of Technology, MENA. And uh, so I've served, in, and I was a senator of the, Fed, of the Second Republic of this country. So I've served in many places. 
There was, there was no time. What is happening in Aso Rock today as regards this matter has ever happened in Nigeria. Look at it. We do what went, be, went wrong between the Oga and the, and the servant. Because the governor called Mwike is Oga. We do not know what is responsible for their disagreement. Now, all of a sudden, 25 or 26 or 27 of them, of the members of the House of Assembly, whom we came to sponsor, paid their, their form. As he said, he paid the, the, the form for the forms of the governor, of the House of, uh, of the Senators, of the House of Representatives, of the, um, of the House of Assembly, and even the local government council. He paid their fees. The question is, whose money did he use? Is it government money or his personal money? If he used government money, it's criminal. So, but nobody has taken a note of that. So what is happening was that, what happened was that, these members now met at an ungodly hour, seven o'clock in the morning, to pass a vote of, uh, to, to, uh, to say that they've suspended one of and therefore they have passed a vote. No reason what was no longer together. They were wrong because they thought the former secretary of PDP, who resigned to contest gubernatorial election in Imo State, was, it was wicked boy, his wicked boy. So he paid for him to go to court against PDP. But they failed. So they, that was their reason. They said the party was divided into two. The party can only be divided into two, according to the Supreme Court, when there is a clear division from top to bottom. But that was not the case. The party is not divided. There are no two working committees. There are no two national executives. There are no two chairmen. There are no two secretaries. Perhaps if we care who is now, neither here nor there, is neither APC, serving APC government, He's not, he's, he called himself P. He said so. So when the law, the constitution says that once you have decided to move from the party that sponsored you to another party that did not sponsor you, you've lost your seat automatically. So all everybody, no, neither Mr. President, none of us can move them back. You can't change the constitution. To amend the constitution, to change the constitution required a majority of the National Assembly members, two-thirds of the state executives to do that. But that has not been done. So no, you cannot alter the constitution from as a rock. So what happened? All we ask is that then the five members or four members remaining, according to the constitution and the legal minerals in this country, you can never leave a vacuum. Once some members have left, the remaining members form, the, form it, form the, 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 the legislature. So they nominated a speaker among themselves. And that speaker position was approved by the court. Nobody has gone to the, any higher court to, to dismiss it. You cannot go to another high court to file a motion that what was done was wrong. No. That's the problem of the judiciary today, where you have several court, uh, uh, federal high courts under the same one court, on the, on the high, uh, Federal High Court Act, 
is only one cord with branches under this technology and in another cord for them to be given conflicting the, uh, the uh, judgment. It's, it's, it's disgraceful. And that's why I've written a letter, open letter to, Ms., uh, to the Chief Justice of Nigeria a few days ago. You must have read it. We cannot continue in a country where nothing goes right. So what I'm saying is that, what we have said is that, please, Mr. President, call Winke to order. He's your minister. And leave the governor alone. That's all what we ask for. Not for him to, inter inter to intermediate or to call them together and, uh, uh, and read to, to them, to the governor, what was prepared by Winke and presented to them. Those terms of, uh, of the eight-point program, if it was actually signed by the governor, he has committed suicide, or he has signed his death warrant. But he doesn't exist alone. People voted him to power. And those who voted him to power said, no, we are not accepting it. Whatever agreement you, you, you got in National Rock is null and void. And we go to court to test it. Only the judiciary can interpret the sections of the Constitution, not individuals. No matter what the position you have. That is our case. We never ask Mr. President to intermediate, to, to, to enter into an agreement, eight point agreement. We said, Wike is your minister. Call him to order and let the, go, let the peace reign in River State. That's all what we discussed. We, we decided upon. All right, all right then, Chief Clark. It seems that um, there's been a lot of discussion regarding uh, the uh, unsettlement within the region. Uh, a few days ago, we had another elder statesman who described the fact that this is like a cancer. It's a slow-spreading situation where other individuals might uh, seem to emulate the bad behavior that is going on right now. Are you concerned with the uh, state of peace uh, in the surrounding regions of the Niger Delta, whether this could uh, in, infect any uh, non-state actors uh, to behave in ways that uh, might not be best for the uh, crisis that's currently happening in the state. Thank you very much. As I told you earlier on my daughter, I said, if you ask eight out of 10, people in the river state, they said what that agreement is known and void. It's unacceptable, oppressive, and unconstitutional. So there is pe people are going about their business. They don't worry. They have no regard for that agreement. Let me tell you, the elders committee, or the elders of river state, that meant to take that decision under the leadership of Chief uh, uh, Rufus Ada George, a former governor of River State. So, who, from whom or did he took over from? Now, decided, it, it, the committee of elders, is not only is your people alone, it's your elders alone. You have the Ogonis, you have the Quares, you have the Eshes, you have their holders. So all of them are there. You have the jobs. Even this morning, I've spoken to leaders of Ogoni, leaders of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Ikwere. And you saw the other day, the reception given to the governor, when he went to, uh, to perform a ceremony of 20,000 um, uh, buildings, low-cost buildings. You saw the reception. So, himself is no more recognized by the people. Those who followed him will continue to follow him, but the majority of River State are with the governor. And they have said, whether we can sign that, uh, uh, that uh, void, uh, null and void the document, we need to support him because they voted him into power. Therefore, 
they will not accept the situation where it is being regarded as a fight between father and son, between Wiki and his, and his servant or his boy. Okay, Chief. Uh... So let me also tell you this. Wiki is a contradictory fellow. He doesn't believe in one thing. The same weekend in 2013, led five members of that House of Assembly under the leadership of one Michael Shinda. When uh, Ameji was ruling, he was supported by the presidency. So they had the securities among them. Five of them went to impeach this, uh, uh, the, the speaker, right honorable Amakri and eventually to impeach Amechi. They were free for fight. All. The maze was broken. And one of them was injured to the extent that he had to be flown abroad for treatment. That state heart of assembly, which people said, oh, the, the governor had no right to do what he had done, uh, including have demolished. We can't have been demolishing other people's houses. He had been demolishing government houses to put new ones. Amechi did the same thing. Is it strange that, that uh, uh, this present governor is doing it? He said that house is no longer habitable. To kill one person is a very serious thing. I will rebuild it. So when the elders in, in uh, River said men, they said, build the place as soon as possible. The same week, eh, led these five people to, to impeach somebody. So he has been in the saddle of this madness in politics in River State. So now he has turned around that five people cannot uh, impeach when he used the same five people in 2013. So all I'm saying, <clears throat> let the peace be in River State. And the people have agreed that the, the gov uh, past governor Odili said, the governor is doing very well. He said so two days ago or yesterday. On Tuesday, I think so. And uh, when the governor said that uh, he would make any sacrifice to bring peace into River State, it's a good statement. He didn't say that I support the agreement. You ask me whether he signed it or not signed it. The governor normally signed with red ink. In that agreement, he did not sign with red ink. It's only Winke and the, uh, the, the, uh, the national advisor, um, security advisor, the Badu, that signed with red ink. I do not think that Odili, Governor Odili, and the governor actually signed that document. Let them say that they signed it, and we believe them. But as far as we are concerned, that document is fake and unacceptable. All right, then, thank so you. So all we are now saying, my, son, my daughter, is that let there be peace in River State. Do we appeal to present again, call Wiki to order, not to it by wanting to retain his structures. Which structures? Is this structure in money or structure in people? Let, it, let him explain what type of structures he has. Let him and the governor tell the people of River State what is going wrong with between them, what secret agreement they entered into. And not to bother the people of River State. We need peace. So all that we did was to call Mr. President. He performed his duties. The, the other day I saw him demolishing, out for the demolition of people's houses in Abuja here. So why should the, the demolition of a, a government house by the governor who is in charge of that place be a problem? He is responsible, but for the committee to say, let the uh, legislators sit wherever they can sit, is ridiculous.
Because in, the, in, in Abuja here, it is the FCT that owns the building in the uh, National Assembly. They maintain it. They repaired it. The other day when Mr. President went there to present his, uh, his uh, budget, he called wicked their landlord. No. I'm old enough to resist anything that is not good for Nigeria. I'm 90. I've already collected my body pass, but I will defend evil until God calls to evil. Thank you. Thank you so much, leader of the Pan Niger Delta Forum, Chief Edwin Clark. I really appreciate we appreciate your time and of course your analysis here on Newsday. Thank you.